This month we've been celebrating women and our guest today is Nomfundo Chavizana. She was appointed by President Cyril Ramaphosa last month as one of two deputy governors of the Reserve Bank. Nomfundo is an economist but says she never thought her career would one day take her back to the central bank. She was the first woman to join the Reserve Bank's Monetary Policy Committee since former Governor Jill Marcus. And he's in studio with us now to have a conversation and to celebrate this extraordinary woman. So nice to have you in studio. Welcome. Thank you. So, I mean, when you look at the position that you have as, as, as the Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank, do you sometimes wake up and think, hang on a second, you know, this is, this is who I am now. This is incredible. Or is it kind of like a, almost like a natural fit to who you are? So, Leanne, I would say that you get a role. It's a five-year role. So you always have to remember who you are in whatever position you get. Because after five years, I'll no longer be the Deputy Governor of the South African Reserve Bank. So I have to remain fundy at all times. I'm fundy, but I am now in a role that allows me to be in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is one of those mind-boggling experiences. Because when you think about it as a woman, there are three other women in the almost 100-year history of the South African Reserve Bank. So when you think about it in that regard, yeah. it is a bit of a shock you know, when it, you think almost, you're there. It, a lot of women in your position kind mm -hmm. of think to the fact that I have so much responsibility in my job already, mm -hmm. but now I have this added responsibility of being a trailblazer, a mm -hmm. woman mm -hmm. in this powerful position, and perhaps breaking down barriers and, and mowing the lawn for other women to mm -hmm. come through. Is it an added pressure or do you almost not even think about that and focus on the job at hand? It is something you have to be conscious about. Yes, you have to focus on the job at hand because that's the primary focus. But you have to think of your legacy. It's a very lonely space to be in when you think yeah. of who your support structure is. Because the support structure is the other colleagues that you can call. It's a very lonely role. You need other people who understand what it is that you've dealt with. And I only have two other people to call in this country. Only two. <laughs> so you do need more people in the central banking space, more senior senior women in the yeah. central banking space. And but it certainly is a global phenomenon as well, not just in South Africa. It really is, and, and it's quite, mm. it's, 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 it's a scary global phenomenon. In fact, I was attending a Women's Day event yesterday, and mm. it's the same conversation that seems to be had all the time, that it was a lady who was doing a doctorate on women CEOs mm -hmm. in South Africa, mm -hmm. and she had to change her doctorate because... She could not do that because there was one CEO in our top 40 listed companies who was Nikki Newton King at the JSC who is no longer. There is not a single woman CEO. Now, that we have to worry. And, and that, that's why when you say it's a lonely role, it is a very lonely space you're in. So one of the more inspiring things that I've come across in my career was having a meeting when, when APSA had just been bought by Barclays. And I was in a meeting and Jill Marcus was there and Wendy Lucas Bull and Maria Ramos. It's one of those inspiring things that are very rare. Yeah. And, and you have got many, many capable women in the country. I, I think we need to move into a space where you start to see women moving up and, and getting more and more elevated. Yeah. And supporting each other. And supporting so each other. So when you say that there are two women that you can call, do you call them? And do they, do they come to your sort of like... Um, you, you're not rescue, but give you advice of, of how you should handle certain situations. Well, so far, I've only been in a role for a very short period of time, but I am fortunate enough to have worked with those women before. They certainly have very high standards. Mm -hmm. So I have worked with former Governor Marcus quite a lot when I was at the Treasury. She really pushes and, and asks for excellence. And she's been an excellent role model for me. And Renosi Mugate, who is also um, a Deputy Governor at the South African Reserve Bank at a time when we hadn't thought about it. But she was actually the first female Deputy Governor of, of the South African Reserve Bank. So these are people that I've worked with in different roles in my, in yeah. my career, and it will be very easy for me to pick up the phone um, to them in the future. T Sydney. Talk to us about Little Fundy, because you, I, it's the one question I love asking successful yeah. and powerful yes. women. Yes. When, when, you look, when you look back and see the Little Fundy sitting there looking at you, what was she like? What, what, what did she enjoy? How did you grow up? 
I grew up loving to read and I was curious about all sorts of things that are beyond my realm. And I would say the differences or the similarities, let me talk about the similarities first between Little Fundi and Big Fundi. Yeah. Is I'm always encroaching into other spaces that don't quite belong to me. So I was an only child in my family for a long time. So I was always listening in on adult conversations. And in a way, this is how my career has gone and has developed. I was always in the wrong place in meetings that I was not supposed to be in. Sort of listening in. Yes, I would use opportunities to take minutes if I could. <laughs> but I just, I wanted to be there and part of that conversation in that room. Yeah. So that part of Little Fundy that just drove that curiosity is there. Yeah. And I still read a lot. So that's what I would say are uh, so other... It was, always, it was always having stimulating conversations, minds, ideas. I mean, you've got such a... You've got a C, I've got a CV of yours sitting in front of me that I don't even know where to begin. Um, I feel out of my league just talking to you. Uh, you worked at the National Treasury, um, at the National Energy Regulator of South Africa, now, of course, at the Reserve Bank, the International Monetary Fund. I mean, these are key organizations, and these are, these are institutions that d determine... The direction of our country and who that directly affect every single South African, mm -hmm. um, it, it really has. How has it been for you, though? You know, stepping into these big roles, these big institutions as a woman, has, has yeah. that added extra pressure to you and your career? I would say there are pressures, Leanne, and in every career path there are trade-offs. Most of the time, women don't talk about them because we take things in our stride. But you have to put off certain decisions. So yes, you want to have children, but you also want to do certain things. And to be in the public service literally is that. It means you are in the public service and nothing's ever about you. So you hardly see anything that is about Fundi. I think this interview is going to be more of the exception. But you put the work first in terms of what has to be done. And that's what you do as a public sector economist. It's about the work that has to be done. It's about furthering the conversation. And it's about pushing the boundaries on what does it take to develop the country. Yeah, and that's, that's why getting to know the, the person behind the role is always mm -hmm. inspiring because I can promise you that there is, we talk about the little fundi, the little fundi at home watching and saying, mm -hmm. man, if this woman can do it, I can do it. Let me follow my dreams. But I'm, I'm now going to put little fundi aside yeah, and, yeah. and put the role player in front of us and ask you, you're not in this position at a particularly easy time for the country. I mean, we're mm -hmm. seeing our finance minister coming up with things to put in place to grow and stimulate our economy. And it is a tough time. What is your take on all of this? And, and some advice to South Africans that are feeling rather despondent at a time that they don't have jobs, we're not sure where growth is going to come from. What do you say? I would say, Leanne, that building and having institutions that are credible is quite important at this point in, in, in the history of the country. I would say that having clearer public accountability is quite important for us at this point in, in, our, in, our, in our economic history. And all of us communicating what we're doing and why we're doing it. We certainly need to move in a direction that will put the country in a better place in terms of its own competitiveness, in terms of lowering the cost of living. These are things that we highlight in various monetary policy statements. But we also have to communicate to the public out there what it is that we do. So you all see us on television, there's a monetary policy committee, but what does it mean for me? Yeah. And why are certain decisions being made? That's, that's something that's very important right yeah. now. Yeah, it is very important. And mm -hmm. it's another, another important issue, and, and, and let's wrap on this one, is, is the issue of the Reserve Bank and the threats against the Reserve Bank. Your comment on that, because that, that, that is also something where you hear these stories and there's so much noise being created mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. people start worrying when we get down to the crux of things, the Reserve Bank and the independence thereof, talk to us about that. It's quite important, Leanne, that we have these conversations as a society. It's very healthy to have these conversations as a society. It's very important for the public to ask the question about what is it that the Reserve Bank is doing. What I will say is that as officials of the South African Reserve Bank, we are bound by the law as it is now. There are many, many things that we cannot do. So there is a conversation that must take place in the public space. But for now, 
we have to defend the mandate that we have. That's what's prescribed to us in the Constitution, and that's what we're, we're saying, and that's how we've been engaging publicly. But we're certainly watching with keen interest how the debate is going to evolve over time. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and meeting you and understanding how a woman like this can be a role model to every single one of us and how she's done so well. Looking back at little Fundi, how big Fundi has done. Uh, so nice to have met you and thanks for coming in. Fundi Ch uh, Chazibana, who was appointed in July by President Sora Ramaphosa as one of the deputy governors of the Reserve Bank.